Hey folks, time for another movie retrospective. Yeah, this is a good one we grew up with. Oh yeah. On HBO and stuff. The Fun House. From 1981, 1981, I think. Yeah. yeah. All-star cast, directed by the dude who did Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Mask. Mask. Toby Hooper. Yeah. A very different kind of movie, but just as good. Better it's quality. got some similarities, yeah. actually. Like, I don't, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is like a classic. I, just, I feel like this one is kind of like an underrated gem kind of thing. Sorry, my voice still sounds crappy. Like, yeah. if you listen to our Richard Ramirez show, I was talking about how I had a little bit of a cold. Well, it went into like a big, huge, whomping cold that's kind of kicking my ass. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually just now got my voice back. I yeah. couldn't even talk yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> so sorry, I kind of sound like crap. This is yeah. a good one because it's like, uh, um, it, it, it's it's very much like the first one in a certain way where it's like a family, yeah, inv- a family involved in crime, but then there's a darker side. Of freaks and weirdos. There's yeah. freaks and weirdos involved, and uh, they're they're working inside a carnival, and uh, then some kids get wrapped up with them, you know, and there, there's a true monster in this movie. Yeah, it's kind of like a combo between yeah. like kind of a low key slasher and like a monster movie. Yeah. Because, I mean, even though he's kind of a person, I mean, he's kind of a monster, too. But this, actually, I want to uh, give a shout-out to friend of the show, Rob, who was the one who sent us the DVD yep. of this. So thank you very much. It actually, you know what's amazing is that I had seen this movie several times in the 80s, like on VHS. And I think I saw it on cable a few times. And it always looked real muddy and shitty and, like, yeah. the, the lighting is bad and stuff. But now that it's been restored, the DVD and the blue, and I've heard the Blu-ray is really good too. Yeah, this actually looks amazing. This is like a really nice looking movie. Yeah, we got it was a standard <clears throat> DVD. There wasn't any extras or anything on it. Really. Yeah, just a trailer. And it looked pretty tight. It looked a lot better than it did on television. Oh course, yeah, I didn't get to see this in the theater. No, I didn't. Um, the 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 monster. I always called him Tad, but Tad was actually the little brother that was in the jar. Yeah, uh, that I, was that was the fetus. In the I car. don't know what the, his name's Gunter. Gunter is the name. Although of, I don't know if they ever called him. No, that the, they just called him boy. Movie, his, but yeah, his dad just his called name. him boy. Yeah, boy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> yeah, the boy mask uh, looked a lot better on 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 DVD than it looked uh, back on television and HBO. Oh yeah, he's super pale and he's basically two headed in a way. It's kind of his head's kind of trying to split apart into two different heads, and he's got he's albino and, and fangs, pig eyes. He do has you, to wear a Frankenstein mask in order to move <laughs> around in public. That's how ugly he is. Do you know that like this didn't even occur to me, but I was watching an interview with Toby Hooper early to, earlier today where he was talking about this movie, and he said I didn't really make this explicit in in the movie. But you know the scene where the four teenagers like go and they're in like the freaks of nature exhibit yeah. and there's like a cow, with, there's a two cow heads, with two heads and there's a cow with a cleft palate? Yeah. He's like, I almost wanted to imply that Gunter, the monster, yeah. was like that one of the cows was his mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. Like, now. you know you know what I mean? So, so he's he like that's part- why he might have been part cow. Yeah, because he's like right. after after I saw like the two headed cow yeah. and the cow with the cleft palate, they were gonna mo- you know put in the movie. Yeah. He's like, oh, we should make the monster look like that just to kind of hint. Like they didn't really say anything about it, but you know, because he had a human dad, obviously, because the one guy, yeah. the carnival barker, but was Tad dad. Tad was in the jar with the damn cows. Yeah, Never was in the back in the freak show. So maybe he was also half so, cow. So yeah, cat, half cow. I didn't. Yeah, I so, didn't make the connection. I didn't either. But I like, thought I thought they were trying to say that maybe they came from a place where the water was bad or something where meat chases. Yeah, that's going it. On. Yeah, that's I how I, I I took it. But, but that's what Toby Hooper said. He right. said he's like I didn't want to like make it explicit or anything, but I just thought it would be amusing if we made the monster like look kind of yeah. like that, so you'd like implicitly make that connection. It's yeah. Like, maybe the cow was his mom. Like maybe there's some cow fucking going it's on at this carnival. It's got a, it's got a cool cast. It's got a 70s hot rod in there. Look, I think that might have been a, a Chevelle or, or, or Camaro. I didn't really get it. It's been, yeah, I think I, it was a Pontiac Le Mans, Is actually. that what it was? Okay. Because I was I was saying, what kind of car is that? I kept waiting. I think to it's s- a Pontiac Le Mans. Kept waiting. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I'm not a car person. Can't wait to see the, the badges on it. I never got to see it. It looked it looked like a Camaro or some, or maybe yeah. a Chevelle, but it was looked cool. It had, it had cuties in it. Had a uh, girl who played uh, Stanzi and Wolf in, 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 in Amadeus, if you ever saw that movie. This was her first movie, actually. I really liked her in the Elizabeth Barrage and yeah. her perky boobies. You get to see those yeah, in the first Yeah, right movie. off the bat. Yeah, as soon as She's the movie starts, pretty much. Cute as hell, you get to see her naked. So, 
<laughs> fan service to for the boys and shit. Now, yeah, it's like I had actually seen Amadeus, yeah. which came out in 1984, which is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. I love fucking Amadeus. Mm-hmm. And um, so, she, yeah, she played uh, Mozart's wife, Costanza, yeah. in Amadeus. So I saw that before that. And when I saw this, I was like, hey, it's Stanzi, because yeah. that's like one of the only other things I've ever seen her in. Yeah. And She's cute as hell in this, though. Yeah, Gunter's dad was pretty cool in it. He was uh, out in the front, you know, and he was... One thing that really kind of stuck with me as a kid is just how creepy he was as a barker out in yeah. the front, trying to get people <laughs> to come into the front house. And, you know, and he, he'd be... He was like, there is no escape. Yeah. <laughs> there is no release from the front house. I feel it? like... Just the, creepy shit. I yeah. feel like that was, like, sampled... In some music or something like that, yeah. and please, like I said, if anybody is like yeah. more of a of a person like super into goth that I am, I could swear that there was a song by Corpus Delicti, yeah. who were a French goth band in the '90s, and I swear that in one of their songs, and I can't remember which one it is, that there was a sample from a movie, and it sounded awfully lot like mm. the Barker from this movie, yeah. which it very well could have been. Who is man enough? <laughs> Enter this world of darkness. <laughs> you almost like the fun house. Yeah, yes. And yeah. also, fun fact, and yeah. this, again, this is another thing I didn't Happened notice. Happened in Florida. Yeah, this is yeah. another thing that I didn't notice. Yeah. So the guy that played the carnival barker that was Gunter's dad, the monster's yeah. dad, that was an actor named Kevin Conway. Now, apparently, he was a Broadway actor, and he had just won a Tony, at least according to uh, Toby Hooper in the interview that I saw. He's like, yeah, he just won a Tony like before I asked him to be in this movie. He's like, so when I asked him to be in this movie, and he's like, I want you to be a carnival barker. And he's like, well, what are these other parts? So Because there's three barkers in this movie. Mm-hmm. All three of them are played by that same guy, which I didn't even yeah, they, realize. Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't seem to be the same guy. No, and that's what so Toby Cooper was saying. He's like, that was he's, he's like, uh, okay, that's interesting. So you want to play these three parts. And he's like, yeah, I want to play these three parts. So he's like, oh, I want to see what this dude's going to do with this. I wonder why I wanted to play all three of them. And... Just he said he didn't know. He's just like, yeah. because? And he's like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah. well, you know, knock yourself out. Yeah, okay. So Kevin Conway was the name of the actor. And Toby Hooper was like, I was amazed because it's like a lot of people don't realize that all three dudes, yeah. you know, he was he was the, the peep show guy. Yeah. You know, because he had different wigs and he yeah, like tell. put on a different voice and stuff like that. Like, I had no idea that that was all three of those were the same guy. But they are. That just, that kills me. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so... It's a good movie. Starts off with a little boy hunting down his sister. Um, little homage to Psycho. A little and homage Halloween to Psycho. A little bit. Halloween. And also a little bit almost kind of like he had a bedroom kind of like the kid from uh, Salem's Lot with all the damn monster posters Also a Toby stuff. Hooper movie, yep. Yeah, and he uh, comes after his sister with a knife in the shower, but it was just a rubber knife. He just tried to scare her. And she had to go on a date. With this, uh, with this guy and Buzz on you know, a double date with Buzz. Buzz, kind of this looking jock, tough guy with his muscle car and, and his he's a feathered he, hair. He, yeah, he's a dick. He, he's kind of a douche. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he uh, uh, she lies to her dad. He, she, he, you know, about going to this carnival because yeah. some shit went had, went down the year before when this carnival Yeah, they don't up. go into it a lot, but they're like, hey, didn't those girls disappear girls or get were... murdered or something like that and yeah. when that carnival was somewhere else. So like she really wasn't prior. supposed to be going, and but the little brother overheard her on the phone lying, setting the whole thing up that she was actually going to go. Little brothers are the worst. Yeah. Although so, I have two little brothers and they're awesome, yeah. so no, not so all little brothers. So she though. goes there Just with saying. her boyfriend on a double date. <laughs> And the little brother goes over there. I think he went there on foot, didn't he? Or was he on a bicycle? He did, yeah, because remember he was walking, and then on his way to the carnival, like, he runs into all these weirdos. Like, this one guy, like, pulls over and tries to pick him up like a pedophile or something, yeah. and then he, like, points a gun at him and yeah. shit for no reason. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's weird. So both the brother and sister are in there, but, you know, I don't think they ever meet, do they? They do not, no. They don't ever meet. So they have two separate adventures, both involving Gunther the monster. Yeah. Uh, you know, I used to call him Tad. Yeah. When I was a boy, Tad was the fetus. Tad the was the, the brother that, that was didn't his make brother. it. Yeah, yeah. The, I guess that was the twin that didn't make yeah, it. Yeah, they, maybe they were conjoined I twins. Think they were I twins. think that was the implication. There's right. a lot of shit going on under the surface yeah. in this kind of movie now that like, you think about it. Yeah. Like I said, on the surface, it seems very much like an early 80s. Kind of a you know kind of a bog standard slasher like mixed with a monster movie, but then like when you yeah. kind of watch it, there's like a lot of other little things going yeah, on. Yeah, it was it was you know 
seeing it as a kid, you know, it scared me. It scared me. It was a creepy flick. Well, there's something inherently there's something creepy about it. carnivals. Yeah. You know, with all the... Um, and Toby Hooper was saying that, too. He's like, that's what intrigued him about the project. I mean, he had only done... I guess he'd only directed two movies prior to this. He did Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974. And then he did Eaten Alive in 1977. And this was the next one that he did. The next one that he did after this was Poltergeist, which, like I said, they don't know if he directed it or Steven Spielberg or whatever, but he gets the credit on it anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so this was the one in between Eaten Alive and uh, Poltergeist. And he said that he had always been creeped out and fascinated by carnivals just because he's like, I was always intrigued with the idea of like this whole like tribe of people that just like went from place to place they were like these itinerant people that just like would come to your town and like set up all this stuff and they always seemed like really mm. seedy and like kind of creepy and shit but yeah. also kind of fascinating so he's like so he really wanted to do something with that he didn't write the screenplay but um you know i think someone had sent him the screenplay hoping that he would direct it like because he was trying to write it in a way that like toby hooper would dig yeah. that so you yeah know. the movie starts off with a bang too i mean they're walking around they're having a good time in the in, in the carnival they're looking at them peep shows and freak shows and uh then they make this pact that they're going to spend the night and they're going to spend the night in that damn fun in house. the fun house like so, their friend did or right. something because so, i think one of them comes up so with the that. girls get on the pay phone and they cross wire it so each one so the parents think they're spending like the night you did the when you were a teenage out. girl right. yeah i'm they, staying at so-and-so's house yeah i'm so staying at her they, house so they break into the fun house and wait for it and they're up and up top <clears throat> up above it and, and it, which it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense really because it's supposed to be a traveling carnival but it's obviously that they're in a it's obvious to me that the the fun house is a permanent construction and it has a basement and it. Well, attic. I don't know because and they attic, actually attic. filmed this. And Toby Hooper was saying it was like we couldn't afford to build our own carnival clearly because yeah. it, this this movie cost like maybe two million dollars if yeah. that. And he said what we decided to do was shoot it in Miami because that's where all of the traveling carnivals go in the winter. Okay. Um, you know, he's like in the neighborhood where we were staying was like super sketchy and people That's were getting right. shot it, at. It and comes stuff. back every year, so it must <laughs> yeah. have had a place where they'd set it up. Yeah. They, they sent the fun house up in a place that was built for a fun house. But yeah. Because it, it had, remember, it had conveyor belts and it had gears yeah. and drives. I mean, it was a building. So anyway, they're up, they're up in the attic and they're watching, you know, they're spying on the carnies and, yeah. and some shit goes down. One of the attendants who's wearing this Frankenstein costume, he's got a limp, he's obviously handicapped. He's trying to, he can't, he can barely talk, he can't understand what he's saying. He's trying to cut a prostitution deal with the damn fortune teller. Madame Zena. Madame Zena. Who's like 80. Yeah. Well, was, she's probably not that No, nah, she wasn't that old. She's in her late 40s, probably. I remember being an old hag, but I saw her again, and I was like, actually, yeah. she's pretty hot. <laughs> She had it for, for, well, yeah, you know, it'd be, it'd be like granny porn, you know what I mean? She's not that bad, you know? So anyway. <laughs> so anyway. I was going to say, you better okay. mention that because I remember you saying, yeah, like, so she, I remember, when I was a kid, like, yeah, I she looked that like an a, old bat, but I'm like, hey, She's not all that bad. Right? Yeah, getting old. So, uh, <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, and there was a good scene with them when they were in there spoofing on her earlier, getting a getting, uh, fortune tally. And there's a weird part where, this is before, you know, when, when before they'd snuck into the place. There was a part where they were they were riffing on Madame Zena's fortune telling, and she got up and kicked him out. When she kicked him out, she dropped the crystal ball, and the crystal ball rolled away. But then it rolled back to her, and she grabbed it. So she's like, magic so there for was a, there was an implication that there was more to Madame Zena than me, me, met the eye. But she was also turning tricks. You know, she's yeah, I guess she's a gypsy. Well, shit. Or she's a gypsy from New York because she had a strong New York yeah. accent when she got mad. She was getting $100 from that. Yeah, she talked from to, that deformed kid. Yeah, she talked him into $100 to, to break it off and they were up <laughs> in his, they were watching and he, he got so excited that he had what they call in the business a premature ejaculation. <laughs> what uh, they call it in the business. Call, yeah. Well, she was Giving him a hand job, trying to get him ready, but he was already ready. And well, she was, was probably just like, "Oh, that was easy." So she wouldn't Bye. give, it wouldn't give him the money. He, he wouldn't give him the money back, and they started fighting. And hey, he had no refunds. Yeah, and and he accidentally killed her, in her in a in a fit of rage. He threw her into a power box. Yeah. When they were fighting over the money, so he goes back to tell his dad. And they, they they were up there and they witnessed it. They saw it. So he goes back and gets his dad, and his dad's going, you're going to give $100 for her? I could have got you, and all kinds of stuff. Other yeah, I could have got the, you one of these hookers the over here for, for $15. Yeah, you know, all kinds I'm of like, stuff. Because you don't, don't run about money. Girls. Where is the money? 
Yeah, because well, all the money in was the, in the till, in the cash box and, was gone, and it was all gone because one of the one of the assholes, one of the teenage assholes, yeah, he stole the till. It. So he starts purring on Tad. What'd you do with the money? What'd you do with the money? I called him Tad. And Tad <laughs> starts beating himself. It was just right. Beat yourself. Hit yourself. Beat yourself. He got him trained to beat himself. It was a cool scene. He's like, I don't even have to do it. He yeah, just does it for me. Well, all that was going on, and they heard him upstairs, and he was, you know. Well, he the, dropped his lighter it, through the yeah, the lighter fell. Slats, yeah, and he the, was like, oh, he's like, oh, up. he goes, and he tries to talk him down and everything, and thus the chase begins. Yeah. Because not only did they witness that murder, Dad had mentioned earlier before that he would bury her, kind of like them two girls that he had killed the year yeah. before. Yeah, he's like, oh, we'll just blame it on the locals. Yeah, so. He he. The dad now knew that there were locals up above, and not only did they know about Madame Zena, they knew about the uh, the other girls. Yeah. That Gunther had killed the the year before, and he and he also said some stuff. He implied that there were some other ones too. Well, yeah. There's a normal... it's never just that many. Right. So they're always gonna like. The... So the games begin at this point. <laughs> you know, they're trying to hunt down these yeah, four through teenagers the fun house. through the fun house in the middle of the night to kill them, and. Uh, I don't want to spoil everything because the movie's so old. Even a lot of people haven't seen it. It yeah. is. It is a good movie, and it had. It had a pretty strong ending for it was for for the for a movie of its time. Yeah. Especially of its budget. I mean, like I said, yeah, it was very low budget. It actually made most of its budget back. I think it made about eight million in the theater. <laughs> Excuse me, but um, I would call it a slasher movie, but it's not super gory. Um. You know, there's a couple scenes that are like kind of, you know, there's an axe in someone's head or something like that. Yeah, but it's yeah. not, it's more atmospheric, I feel like. There was some action in it, though, too. Yeah. It was more like a thriller. Yeah. A monster thriller. I mean, I kind of like that because I, I feel like a, some of the reviews um, I've read, and I, and I was reading some reviews of people that had seen it as a kid and thought it was boring, but then they saw it again as an adult and they're like, no, it's like they actually appreciated that it took time to, yeah. like, set up all the characters and the interaction yeah. between the characters, like, before this long yeah. chase sequence, like, through the funhouse with the monster guy, like, going after definitely. them. Definitely the highlight of the movie is, is the characters and the dialogue. I mean, they're definitely spinning a tale to you. You know what I mean? They're telling you a story, and they do kind of keep you interested in the story and in the characters. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not one that... It's not one that is... Where the characters don't matter. There's a lot of stories that you don't really give a shit. You just put it on whatever. I remember it kind of got that way when we were kids because we saw it so many times. Yeah. We would just this was on it. cable They would a just lot. play it over and over again when it was new. So it, it, it got burned. You get burned out on it when you were a kid. But you still liked it, you know. Yeah. But, but uh, revisit it again, you know. It's, I forgot what a good movie it was. And like I said, now that we've seen it like in its restored state, yeah, it, it almost looked like well, Toby Hooper filmed it in like what what do they call like anamorphic widescreen? He he, which he really likes working in. And like I said, when you saw it on cable or on shitty VHS, you couldn't really tell. Yeah. But when you see it now that it's been restored, it really looks fantastic. It almost it at times like especially the scenes inside the fun house, it almost looks like a giallo movie because yeah, it's like they'll be the like yeah they'll be like a close up of like some weird like animatronic monster up here and the, like it's green and then like in the background it's all red and then it's like dark all in between and it looks like super cool like yeah. he really has an eye for you know just yeah. kind of the framing and the colors yeah, and like did. making it look like kind of lurid and shit. It looked as cool as say like. <laughs> Kind of like Evil Dead Two. I mean, not not yeah. really the not, the same things. Of course, didn't happen. And it. It, Evil Dead Two was really strong on special effects, but it it looked to be like around the same quality. Yeah. You know, the color in Giallo. Look, it did. It looked Italian. For the it time. did, and like I said, yeah. a lot of um, American directors were really influenced, especially John yeah. Carpenter, and I presume Toby Hooper as well. Um, were really influenced by that genre because yeah, yeah. I mean that's kind of where the whole slasher thing came from. Now that you say it, it does look kind of like a Carpenter flick when Carpenter's being good. Sometimes yeah, Carpenter that's what I thought. Good, yeah. Like I said, but it, it reminded yeah. me very much, and some people have said it looks kind of a little bit Hitchcockian in places as well, and the way they kind of build up the suspense. Honestly, one of the best scenes in it is when um, you know the little kid who is uh, Elizabeth Barrage's um, little brother, when the parents come to pick him up, 
And she sees them, like, through the exhaust fan of the funhouse, but she can't yeah. get out. And she's, like, screaming for her dad. She can see him, and he's right there. Yeah. And she's, like, screaming and screaming, and they show it from the outside. And she's like, Daddy, Daddy. And, like, yeah. he can't hear anything. And it's like, that scene kind of got me, because I'm just like, oh, man, that you, sucks. And she's going to get fucking murdered. You know what this movie kind of compares to, I think? What's that? Probably, like, The Fog, but better. Yeah, yeah. I actually like this a bit better I like better it better. The, the, the story's tighter, more happens in it. It's it, it, but it looks kind of like the fog. It looks, but looks like it was on the same budget. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you'd have told me now, now that you, I think this now, is a comparable budget. I yeah. think I think Toby Hooper said it costs about two million to make. Yeah, and like I said, they shot it in Miami. That's a real carnival. A lot of the extras are actual carnies. Um, the guy that played Gunter, the monster, was actually a mime. He oh, said yeah. we didn't have that idea until he's like we he's like me and a bunch of the crew were like out at some club or some restaurant or something in Miami one night and we were talking about casting the um the monster part and he's like we saw this mime artist like in the street or something and he's like that's what we should do we should get a mime like to play that part because <clears throat> because it's like this kind of physical type of thing so they got the guy to play him was like was a mime so I thought that was actually a really good idea yeah. also the reason that he wears a Frankenstein mask is because he was just going to wear a generic mask over his regular face. I think Rick Baker did the effects for this, actually. That's why they look so good. But um, since the movie was produced by Universal, and obviously they had, uh, yeah. <coughs> they had the rights to all the Universal monsters, so they decided... <coughs> Damn, you all right? Yeah. yeah. So they decided to uh, use that... <laughs> in fact, the kid had uh, nothing but Universal Monsters in his room. That's why, and that's yeah. why, because they had the rights to use all that, so they figured might as well. Right. They wanted to kind of homage that as well. Now, one thing that I kind of wanted to make mention of that I thought was really funny, and our British listeners will probably appreciate this, is that during the video nasty furor in the 1980s, this movie was actually uh, kind of... Uh, singled out as a video nasty and they attempted to prosecute it as a video nasty um, but were unsuccessful because clearly there's not a lot of blood in it there, yeah. there's no gore there's nothing that I mean considering some of the other movies that were on that yeah. list I'm not saying they should have censored any just one tough, of them just but I mean compared this compared to like Cannibal Holocaust there's like not even any comparison so later speculation has it that when uh, the British Board of Film Censors were looking for you know movies to prosecute they actually got this movie confused with another movie that's actually better known by the title last house on dead end street but under some markets <coughs> was released as the fun house two words so and that film was like way worse and like mm -hmm. way gorier and shit so i feel like that's probably the one they were aiming for and they just got it confused got it mixed up. because this one's called the fun house that one's called the fun house yeah I also wanted to, um, and Rob, who sent us this movie, also sent me a little video about this today, that apparently after the movie came out, there was a novelization of it, and it was written by Dean Koontz. Okay. Although he was, at first he wrote under a pseudonym, though I guess later he put his actual name on it. And Toby Hooper was saying, he's like, you know, I got some copies of the book like at the time, but I didn't read them because... I thought, you know, oh, it's just like a piece of merchandising and it's probably not very good. Dean Coots wrote it though. But yeah. yeah, but he's like a couple years ago, I actually sat down and read it. He's like, that book is actually really yeah. good. And it like goes into like a lot of the backstory of the carnival and the backstory of the characters and shit like that. I haven't read it, but I've heard it's like actually pretty decent. I have to say I'm not a huge Dean Coots fan. Uh, some of his shit is good. Um, but I'm going to have to like seek this out and read it because... Yeah. I'm kind of interested to see what he did with the story. Like I said, I love shit that's set in carnivals. Yeah, was his mom a cow? <laughs> that, oh, yeah. yeah oh, I wonder if it says cow? in the book. Yeah. Call me Dan Koontz. Is yeah. he still alive? I guess he is. Yeah, tell me. Was that, <laughs> was that guy fucking a cow? <laughs> well, his dad did say that he was, what, he was kind of like a demon. Didn't he yeah. say he was kind of... Well, he, yeah, he did kind of say... like a demon or something. There was... No, it, it was... He's scrawny. But he makes up for it, I guess, in ferocity and the fact that he doesn't really appear quite human. Yeah, well, he definitely when, when, doesn't. When the, look the, when the mask comes on, he actually, to me, when I, even when I was a little kid, he looked like an albino vampire bat. He did, That's yeah. what he looked like to me. Yeah, he looks like animalistic. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, he's clearly supposed to be like a deformed human, but he really he had doesn't. Fangs like, he had fangs <laughs> like a vampire bat and big, wide-spaced eyes. 
and his eyes were pink and they they just didn't because they were so far apart they 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 didn't look like a human eyes look like animal eyes yeah and like i said this i think he had evidently ripped the little girls apart and stuff like that yeah and then his dad said he ripped them apart I don't remember if he said that or not, but yeah, he again. might have. That's it. But one thing they did in this, which, you know, the same kind of thing they did in Frankenstein and King Kong and everything like that, was they made the villain, the monster, he was kind of sympathetic, too. Because he couldn't help looking like no. that. And no. he wasn't, like, smart enough to really know what he was doing. And, like, the way that yep. his dad treated him was like, oh, I should have strangled you at birth. Yeah, yeah, and his dad was mean to him. He was, like, super abusive and stuff. So you almost kind of felt bad for he him. He would back off of it, though. But, <laughs> you know, his dad was a dick, too. Yeah, like, his dad later be yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't really yeah. mean that and blah, blah, blah. But that's, like, something but that he, abusive He was also kind of like, a, yeah, I think he was also kind of manipulating him to get him to, to, to finish the mission. Exactly, too. exactly. That's yeah. exactly what he was doing. Yeah, because yeah. he was, oh, I'm sorry. Just, like, like just do yeah. what I told you to do and everything be will be right, okay. Yeah. And, like, you know, I won't be mad at you and stuff yeah. like that so you did kind of feel sorry although for he too. did tell he did tell the victims before he killed them that one scene he says that he would he's not much to look at and blah 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 but he will be a great comfort to me in my old age yeah so I don't know was he implying that he could send him out to go kill people or was just going to take <clears> care <throat> of him I don't know yeah, because I'm like that. I don't think I don't yeah. think that Gunter was going to be taking care of anybody. Yeah, I don't think he'd be too much of a, of a, of a much of a help. I mean, you know. No, kid, I, I don't think right. so either. I mean, I guess he could, maybe. <coughs> I guess he. Could, yeah. <coughs> I guess he could do stuff around the circus. We're, th- we're, we're we're thinking too much and putting too reading too much into a B movie. <laughs> really, this, this is a B movie. It was just That's a well right, done man. That's what we do. It's a well done B movie. Yeah, yeah and like I said, if you like Toby Hooper's other movies, and I don't see any reason why you wouldn't like this one, like I said, it's it's a pretty good, um, you know, slasher, sla- you know, slasher sort of monster movie from the early '80s. Um, kind of better than a lot of the ones that came out at the time. Yeah, it's better than The Fog. I put it at the same level. I'd, I'd like start off with like The Fog, right? Yeah. But better. Yeah. What else could you think is exact on that <coughs> closer to it? You think? Uh oh, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. Um, Maybe um, I don't really know. Actually, what's that? What would be uh, about that same level? You I, know, it's uh, one movie that I really liked that I saw at the time. I think it came out the same year as this was My Bloody Valentine. Although I think yeah. this was better than My Bloody Valentine, just because it looks more stylish. Yeah, My Bloody Valentine. I feel like I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember it being more workmanlike. Around the same time, also Terror Train, and I'd say this is better oh, than Terror Train. Oh, Terror Train was real good, too. But, yeah. like, Terror Train was shot, like, Terror that, Tra- that was, like, pretty classy looking, I yeah. remember. It would, Okay, you know what? This story actually is better than Friday the 13th Part 1. Well, obviously. Yeah. It it's a lot than. more atmospheric. Lot like more I atmosphere. said, there's... Not, it didn't have the same, you know, it wasn't the same slasher kill scenes and yeah. special effects. This movie doesn't actually need <clears throat> that. No, like I said, this is pretty tame, like as yeah. far as violence and gore and stuff goes. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna put this at the same level. I'm gonna put it at the, pretty much the same level as the hills have eyes. Yeah. Okay. I would say about like that. I was gonna. That was pretty I was good gonna story. say that the thing that probably elevates this one is the is the whole carnival setting. Yeah. Because it almost becomes its own character. You know what I mean? Because and yeah. you can tell that it's a real function in carnival. Like some of the shots he gets of it, I forgot to mention that he did two really amazing crane shots in this. Yeah, yeah. Which maybe are some of the first ones ever done. He said yeah. we had like a 150 yeah. foot industrial crane. I mentioned it. I that, said, yeah, they must have had a crane or something. Yeah, what it was 150 feet long. Back. He said it was in three sections. Yeah, you didn't. You would. I didn't expect that because that just not wasn't for a movie really, of that time period. They no, didn't really do it much. Back no, the then. early 80s B movie slasher type horror movie. You didn't. You, you, you just didn't, didn't see ex- crane shots. You didn't expect shots like, like that. Like now, it's easy because you can do shit with drones and everything yeah. like that. But I was yeah. like, and I know I was surprised too I was when like, I saw whoa, that shot. Whoa, I'm like, whoa. holy crap! I was waiting for it to cut. It goes. No, they can't keep going. Nah, it's gonna cut. <laughs> no, it's gonna did. cut. No, it went on a good. Yeah, he said it was a big industrial crane. It wasn't yeah. made for that. He right. said we just had it and we had the idea to put the camera on it. It was a nice. They had to climb up on it. It was 150 feet long. It was a nice smooth. It lifted and full pull back and pan at the top. And I was, you know, I was like, man, they went through the whole range of motion. Yeah, there were two shots like that in the yeah. movie and they were really nicely done mm-hmm. so like i said the whole setting of this really really elevates it i think into something better than a lot of the slashers of the period just yeah. because the carnival setting is like so rich and colorful and there's like so much you can do with it and it's also kind of like has that whole creepy seedy underbelly of america type yeah. vibe that's like so effective and what was funny is that at the time it got no recognition it just kind of went unnoticed because of the genre 
I mean, yeah, yeah horror was just like bottom <clears throat> of the barrel. No matter, it got know. fairly, it got yeah. mixed to positive reviews. If it wasn't um, The Exorcist or The Omen, they Gene didn't give Siskel a shit. Gene Siskel loved it. Did he? Yeah, good, he, good. Okay. He really liked he it. He saw it for what it was then. Yeah. He, he recognized greatness. Yeah. Because, because the average person, you know, back in those days, we grew <clears> up, we know the deal, we grew up back then. If it wasn't The Exorcist or The Omen, then it was a cheap, low-budget movie. They didn't give a shit. Yeah, people it. did not really appreciate they horror appreciate movies, it. I think, the way they appreciate them now. And, like, yeah. and I'm not saying that there weren't, a lot of them weren't cheap knockoffs and they sucked, because they did, but... Yeah. I don't know. A lot of movies in every genre are cheap knockoffs. We got to do Evil Speak. We did that already. We did Evil Speak. Okay, yeah. that's right. We've <laughs> we done so many of them. I forgot which one. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we, we did Evil Speak. I remember yeah, doing that was good for that a while back. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch we have to do. Like I said, we bought some, and it's like, I just pushed this one up because Rob sent it to us, and it was kind of a surprise. And I was like, well, oh. I was like, well, we'll do this on the next show then. And I'm just really sorry that my voice sounds so crappy, and I've like had to stop and cough yeah. and all this other kind of crap so hopefully it's not too annoying for you yeah guys. we might have to edit some coughing out <laughs> yeah we'll see i might not i might get too lazy not just shut it, it down i mean your voice is giving out anyway. yeah it is all right so uh that will do it for our retrospective on toby hooper's 1981 film the fun house hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks again rob for sending us a, a copy of it we really appreciate it Remember, if you like the show, like, share, subscribe on all your social media. If you'd like to financially support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast, or go to our blog, 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com, and there is a little button in the sidebar to a PayPal account. We will see you next time. Bye.